Hello everyone! In this video, we will discuss the cell-mediated immunity. The acquired immune response has two main arms, the cell-mediated immunity, mediated by T lymphocytes, and the humoral immunity, mediated by B lymphocytes. T lymphocytes are classified into two main types, T cytotoxic cells that are responsible of killing abnormal cells and T helper cells, whose main function is sending messages in the form of molecules called the cytokines. And those cytokines play the main role in organizing and regulating the functions of the whole immune system. So, in this video and the next one, we will illustrate the T lymphocytes, how they work and the cytokines they produce. Let's start with identifying the T cells surface molecules. This green cell is a T helper lymphocyte and the pink one is a T cytotoxic lymphocyte. The most important cell surface molecule is T cell receptor, which is responsible of identification and attachment to antigens. Each T cell receptor is formed of alpha chain and a beta chain. And each one of them has a constant part near the T cell surface and a variable part. The antigen is attached to a T cell through variable portions of both alpha and beta chains. T helper cell only identifies antigens attached to MHC class 2 molecules on the surface of antigen presenting cells. While T cytotoxic cell identifies antigens attached to MHC class 1 molecules on the surface of any body cell. T cell receptors are very specific. Identify only a certain antigen. One T cell identified TB, for example, the other identifies hepatitis B, and the other identifies hookworm, and so on. And all T cell receptors on the single T cell identify the same antigen. The second molecule is CD3. CD represent cluster of differentiation which present near T cell receptor and help in transmitting the signals. Next are either CD4 molecules on the surface of T helper cells or CD8 on the surface of T cytotoxic cells. So T helper cells are called CD4 cells and T cytotoxic lymphocytes are called CD8 cells. Another important molecule on the surface of T lymphocytes is CD28 molecule. After a T helper cell receptor attaches to an antigen on the surface of an antigen presenting cell, a second signal is important for activation of the T helper cell to start cytokines production. This signal is provided by the attachment between CD28 molecule on the surface of T helper cell and B7 molecule present on the surface of the antigen presenting cell. And if this second signal doesn't occur, the T helper cell will shut down and don't work. The last molecule is CD40 ligand, which attached to CD40 cell, CD40 molecule on the surface of B lymphocyte to activate it. To summarize, each T cell has several molecules on its surface, T cell receptor to attach to its specific antigen, CD3 helps in signal transmission, CD4 on the T helper cell surface or CD8 on the T cytotoxic cell surface, CD28 to bind to B7 molecule in the surface of the, T anti of the antigen presenting cell, and the CD40 ligand to attach to CD40 molecule on the surface of B lymphocyte. Before illustrating the sequence of events, let's know about antigen presenting cells. There are three. First are dendritic cells, which are the most important. Macrophage and B lymphocytes. All nucleated body cells, including antigen presenting cells, have MHC class 1 molecules on their surfaces. So, any viral infected cell or any tumor cell can activate T cytotoxic lymphocyte. 
However, only antigen-presenting cells have MHC class 2 molecules on their surfaces, so that they are the only cells that are able to activate T helper lymphocytes to produce cytokines. And this is very logic and considered a protective mechanism of our body because cytokines are potent molecules in very low concentrations and the high levels of them cause serious life-threatening toxicity. So, not any cell can activate cytokines production. Only antigen-presenting cells can do. Antigen-presenting cells also have B7 molecule on their surfaces to deliver the second signal for T helper cell activation. B lymphocytes also have CD40 molecules on their surfaces. For antigen presentation, we have three types of T lymphocytes. Each one is responsible of certain immune response. If we have intracellular virus or bacteria that live in the, cell, in the cytoplasm of the cell, the cell will show some of their antigens on its surface attached to MHC class 1 molecule. Then, the T cytotoxic will come and identify these antigens and kill the infected cell. Second, if we have an intracellular protozoa like Leishmania that is engulfed by macrophages and lives inside parasite of resfacule, or certain bacteria that do like that, like mycobacteria, the macrophage will show some of their antigens on its surface attached to MHC class 2 molecules. T helper 1 cell come and identify this antigen and produce certain cytokines like interferon gamma to help macrophages to kill those organisms inside them. Lastly, if we have an extracellular organism that circulates in blood, or products of an intracellular one that circulates in blood. So, the B lymphocytes will identify them through its receptor and degrade them into vacuole, then show some of their antigens on its surface attached to MHC class 2 molecules. So, T helper 2 cells will come and bind to these antigens and become activated to produce cytokines that help the B lymphocytes and promotes humoral immunity. T cytotoxic cells can identify only antigens attached to MHC class 1 molecules, so they are called MHC1 restricted. T helper cells can identify only antigens attached to MHC class 2 molecules, so they are called MHC2 restricted. A certain T cell receptor can attach to only a certain specific antigen attached to a certain specific MHC molecule. This complex is very specific and this is called MHC polymorphism. So, the term cell-mediated immunity includes killing abnormal cells by T cytotoxic lymphocytes and activation of macrophages by T helper 1 lymphocytes, while T helper 2 response is considered a part of the humoral immune response. And now, let us illustrate more the main pathways for cell-mediated immunity, the two main pathways. First one, the T helper 1. T helper 1 is activated by intracellular bacteria like Mycobacterium tuberculosis or Mycobacterium leprae, protozoa like Leishmania or Trypanosoma, and fungi. They are phagocytosed by macrophages, which internalize them inside a phagosome, digest them, and show some antigens of them on its surface attached to MHC class 2 molecules. A specific T helper 1 cell then becomes attached to this MHC antigen complex through the T cell receptor. T helper 1 cell becomes activated and secretes interferon gamma. Interferon gamma helps macrophage to get rid of the pathogen inside it. It stimulates macrophage to produce reactive oxygen radicals and nitric oxide, both are lethal to organisms, and help the fusion between the phagosome, where the organism lives, and the lysosome, which is a bag of digesting enzymes that destroy the organisms. For T cytotoxic cells, the stimulant is an abnormal cell, either viral infected cell or a tumor cell. 
The cell show virus antigens or tumor antigens on its surface attached to MHC class 1 molecules. A specific T cytotoxic cell becomes attached to these MHC antigen complex. T cytotoxic cells then produce cytoplasmic granules, including granzymes, which are enzymes that destroy the cell DNA, and perforins. Perforins they perform pores in the cell. Through these pores, the fluid enters the cell and the cause osmotic lysis of the cell. T cytotoxic cell also has a molecule on its surface called fast ligand factor 4 apoptotic signal ligand that binds to a receptor on the target cell called FAS factor 4 apoptotic signal and this reaction stimulates the target cell to induce apoptosis which is a clean death. T cytotoxic cells are very specific. The cell responsible of killing virus B for example kills only virus B infected cell. However, we have a T cell called the natural killer cell that do the same functions of T cytotoxic cell, but it is not specific. The same natural killer cell can kill any abnormal cell, virus B infected cell, corona infected cell, or a tumor cell. So the natural killer cell response is a part of the innate immune response, not a specific and not powerful response like that of T cytotoxic cells. Lastly, Let's talk about the term super antigen. For the normal antigens we know, to induce activation of T helper cells and the result in cytokines production, they must be phagocytosed by an antigen presenting cell and showed on its surface attached to MHC class 2 molecule to be attached to the variable portions of both alpha and beta chains of T cell receptor of the T helper cell. So, a small number of T helper cells are activated, and only the required useful quantities of cytokines are produced. However, a superantigen is attached to MHC class 2 molecule and the variable portion of beta chain only like a clump without entering an antigen presenting cell. So, some antigens do that and act as superantigens like enterotoxins and the toxic shock syndrome toxin of staphylococci resulting in simultaneous activation of large numbers of T helper cells and production of large quantities of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-2 and the tumor necrosis factor alpha and this results in systemic toxicity, fever, hypotension, renal failure, even shock and of course no effective immunity results and no memory cells are produced. This is very dangerous. Super antigens are very dangerous. Thank you for watching us and wait for the cytokines video.